even though I'm not the chair to the chair. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, so I'd like to, uh, Greg, um, I'd like to call to order the governance and compliance committee meeting of the IDA to order. Um, there's one item for discussion, which is the qualifying solar and renewable energy projects policy, also known as solar up. So um, Kelly, would you like to present, um, present, present this? Sure. So I'll provide a little bit of background and then I'm going to um, send it over to Joe. He's been quarterbacking the initiative for working very closely with the county executive's office on the solar up Suffolk initiative. So the, the county executive is um, very focused on finding ways to encourage as many, if not all businesses with flat roofs to entertain solar or any other um, means of sustainable energy. So we've been working together we formed a pretty large committee um, that has met on uh, one occasion. Um, and as a result of that, we recently had a meeting with the uh, interim CEO of LIPA. Um, most of you know you received an invitation on November 18th. It will be our first annual LIBBC sponsored event. Um, the county executive is the keynote speaker with regard, and obviously the topic is solar up Suffolk. Um, and fortunately for us, John Rhodes, the LIPA interim CEO will be attending as well. Um, so we have looked extensively as what we could do it as an agency. And quite frankly, the policy is very, very similar to the affordable housing policy in that um, we are strongly urging clients to incorporate and include solar on the rooftop when they come to us. Um, we are able to sales tax exempt the roof materials if a roof needs to be replaced so that we can reduce some of the costs there. And so what we believe we can do is offer an enhanced pilot um, to incentivize that. Uh, I think the devil is in the details on this one, and I'll be working closely with council to figure out how to incorporate the language into the closing documents to really hold them to. Because with solar, it's um, you know, it, it there's a long permitting process. Um, there's feasibility studies, and oh, I'll let Joe to it because I really know. Yeah, why don't you fill them in on that and I'll kind of circle back to the uh, policy. Yeah, so so some of the processes with solar is for, you know, vendors and the companies to kind of get together and we go through that process of uh, post-based analysis to determine if the system will work for them, determine if it's going to generate enough electricity, come up with some sort of a break-even analysis to determine how far down the road they're going to actually start breaking even. Um, there's been a lot of talk about community solar We've been really focusing in, in on uh, some of the, the hot pocket industrial area. This far as a real good area to generate uh, solar because there's uh, almost uh, 20 million square feet of rooftops that have accessibility. There's only about 40, I think there's about 400 buildings and only about 40, 40 or so buildings right now currently have solar, so to speak. So it's a big opportunity. Um, what we've tried to do here as well is we've tried to create some initiatives that uh, the companies have to actually provide us with some data to ensure that they're going to meet those requirements, meaning that there's going to be a pretty reasonable payback and break even analysis. Um, them showing that they're actually using the system for their own purposes and being bombed out to somebody else. And it's not used as an investment tool for, for a third party. So we think we put some of those parameters in place, uh, looking to ensure that they give us the total package and the total cost. We're trying to ensure that we set the enhanced uh, pilot to the actual cost of the project. Um, make sure that the generate, uh, the, end, the electric generation that's coming off of the system is actually somewhat beneficial. Um, I'm sure that there's a, if there's any government intention that needs to be done is taking care of it problem matter. Thank you. Questions? 
but this piece, so because the solar project is very different than the building refit, and it, it, it is reliant on so many other factors. Do we contemplate like, here's your pilot for your project and here's the other piece? Because if you lump it all together and one piece doesn't happen, then what sort of recourse do we have? That excellent question and it's consideration that we are going to make. Um, we would look to um, potentially increase the length of the pilot and that would be at the end. And so it would be set up similar to, we, we did this with uh, one other project. So they have to meet those goals before they would actually get that enhancement. And they would have to certify to, you know, the actual installation and use of the system. So I, it's going to be a little complicated and we haven't worked through all the details yet, um, but yes, is the answer. Especially for the sales tax component, I think we should consider having an authorization for the sales tax exemption for whatever the, the foundation of the project is and a separate authorization for the sales tax related to the solar because that's, because you don't want to end up having a conversation with an applicant that they're, that they're in, they're, they're outside of their obligations because they built the building, they hired the people, right. and they 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 met the jobs, but this one piece is not there, right? Because uh, obviously they still did some good. I, I want to do the, all the good. Is yeah. There, so, is there a point of clarification? Yes. Is there sales tax on solar? There's in, no sales tax on installation in solar in Suffolk okay. County. So we would we wouldn't be all right. So then right, that only one of our be, opponent for the pilot. Then what are we? We're just giving them an enhanced pilot on. So the, they, Everything else, create the investments, make this investment. These projects generally can cost anywhere from a million to three million for somebody to build the top solar because generally we do have to replace the roofs at the same time. So they are pretty expensive. And um, we're trying to incentivize, and this is the incentive. Maybe we can possibly extend our pilot for them on the back end. But they will have to, you know, comply yearly and show that the system is generating electricity, it is working, it is functioning, and that it's still there. And they would receive sales tax exemption on uh, roofing materials, which would just enhance the capital investment. So I, I think that would be fine to leave. That's no, it's a super expensive piece of this. Yeah. Yeah. The only other thing I had, like the wage rates, all these are not required. These are just some of the things that we consider. Because number four, the wage rates on many of these buildings, um, they're being used as warehouse or space that may not exactly bring along high wages. So yep. that's not a requirement. It's an evaluation point. That's correct. Okay. And this is similar to the affordable housing incentive. Mm -hmm. It is. So in, in addition, we think the value that we can bring to encouraging it's, you know, it is very costly is we're trying to create a toolbox or a roadmap for clients. Um, so this is a very small piece of it, but, you know, kind of putting together all the resources because it's been, you know, a pretty long road uh, for us going through it. So for a business owner, we'd like them to know you have to go to the town, you have to acquire this permit. Here's what you have to do with the county. Here are the people that provide the services. Here's Verizon's role and PSEG's role. And so they, it's a very complicated process we're finding out. Um, and so we think that some of the value we can add is just by providing these resources as a toolbox. Um, Especially because when we are involved, people are redoing the building in the first place. Oftentimes they're doing a lot of construction. So it's not disruptive to business to, to do this construction at the same time. Exactly. exactly. And would we be going these projects alone or would there be other government entities involved like NYSERDA or any other participant paying you? Agency. Unfortunately, NYSERDA doesn't operate downstate. Right. Um, but somebody said, sir. Yeah, we, we're still investigating that. We're still trying to kind of corral uh, whatever resources. I don't know, do you bring to bear? Do you have any others that you? No, there's no one sub county, there's no government agency that really comes into play. So, so I mean, there's a lot of incentives for residential solar. Is that so? It was not applied to commercial. Is that why they do? Yeah, there are there are there's, there are some. Uh, there, there's government uh, thirty percent uh, on the government side. Um, there is uh, accelerated uh, depreciation. 
there are a couple of different functionalities on, on the outside of what we because there are state loans that I think are much lower interest rates too that comes through a nice survey. Not not for the commercial not side. For the commercial side is like two million you have to have for them to go through the pace loan. Um and those are just competitive loans, they're not at a discounted rate. Well, because uh, I was looking at solar and they were offering like three percent interest on yeah, state they, loans. I think on the individual side that's okay. true, but on the commercial it changes over a little bit. Now. I'm sure my company did it the biggest besides the environmental piece method. That, that's what drove it. But the accelerated depreciation that Joe talked about, that advanced the return on investment by four years. True. Sure. Because you took it all up front. Right. Um, you know, when I was on the life board, we had, we were reimbursing, uh, or we had a program or changing out uh, whether it was for us, it involves telling these, or there's a, there's a program that we had. And um, um, you have to stay on top of it. Uh, because we found out that um, people were actually looking for money on the deal. That the, the pricing on some of these fixtures was coming down um, so much that we were, uh, our, our reimbursements on them were, were more than it was costing them, uh, which was not what the idea was supposed to be. So, um, same concept here, you know, I don't think we want to have a situation where um, everybody is, so sort I'm of saying the rate payers are paying for uh, solar that somebody's actually making uh, dollars on. We have to be careful on the other rebate programs that yes. may be out there uh, that we don't add another one on. And, uh, uh, and, it, and it makes a point where, let's just say a million dollar job between all the various, you know, kick-ins uh the kick-ins are a million too mm -hmm. and only really cost them a million so um the fact of you know we're we're financing would that be um so just to add to your point chris um would that be something that the staff would look at in terms of a but for clause like but for so i think I, what i would say um is this is the first time we're discussing the policy we were looking for exactly this kind of feedback. And um, so what we would do is take the feedback from today and go back to the policy. We're going to need to reach out to council. Um, Barry Carrigan from uh, Nixon Peabody has been very helpful with regards to solar. So I think what we would do is look to see what we can incorporate into the policy from the feedback that you're giving us today and then we'll come back again and present uh to chris's point though but chris are you talking about the cost of the installation because i mean you're talking you know the break-even point could very well be earlier than you know the enhanced pilot so yeah the break-even point on most of these projects are somewhere between six and eight years Right, so we're extending somebody out to 20 years. I mean, they're, you know. Well, I think that's the whole idea of the enticement is to say we're going to give you a couple more years on the pilot to actually make that investment and create and get off the grid and create the renewable energy. And we're going to give it to you at the end. So that we can oh. validate. The time's at the end, but the money's at the beginning. Right. Because whatever it's going to be, it's, it's, going, to, it's going to fall off. You're going to get the biggest thing in the beginning. Yep, yep. So, because it is a number, uh, I know we have the ability to have a, uh, a consultant involved here to um, do the analysis mm -hmm. as well. What, what their analysis is, and, and we, well, that's what they, they're required to do, that, aren't they, Chad? Yeah, they're, they're, they they actually go through that process and, and try to figure out and determine what the case study would be, and they do individual case studies. Right. It's called the Caesar. Is that the Caesar? The Caesar is uh, is more of an interconnection. Uh, impact study to see you know so that's required it. also that's required also. And, and that's where they'll make you pay if their system isn't ready for your building correct you have to pay for that right so what, we, what, what i think we're leading in this relationship to you know if, if it's a three million dollar project but you know they're also getting incentives from the government and, and initial you know expedited depreciation what is their real cost out of pocket i don't think on the back end of the pilot two or two or three extra years that's going to even come close to that extension is going to come close to the initial investment that they're going to make so currently right now it's like 30 percent on the government side and then you got you don't really have anything else there's a 10 percent addition 
that the government allows if it, it is um, sourced, meaning all the materials sourced in the United States, and there really isn't that much that is sourced here as far as the actual materials. So there's really a 30%, and then there's the accelerated uh, break even uh, accelerated depreciation, but also for many of them, it may not even help them as accelerated depreciation, right? You're assuming that they're making money and making a lot of money that first year to be able to actually utilize that whole thing, right? On the accelerated depreciation, right? Right, the company has to be right. The company has to be really profitable for them to utilize that rent to gain. So there's a lot of different factors, and I don't think on the, the you know year 11 and 12 on the accelerated pilot. But that's going to, you know, make that much of a difference. That's really, really what we're trying to do is entice. It's really just an enticement mechanism to meet, you know, Suffolk County's solar art program. We try to get, you know, more companies manufacturing warehousing to try to get into the solar business and start developing more renewables. Because we're doing a good job on, on the housing side on Long Island and Suffolk. And we just, I think on the commercial side, it's kind of fallen a little bit. So is the right way to think of this, if our UTEP acts with this policy or any other, the additional kicker policies, for lack of a better way to describe it, if, it, if our UTEP said 12 years, we might consider 14 if they do this, but it's still going to burn off at whatever is the appropriate rate. It'll start with 50 and burn off. So it, it just extends it maybe another couple of years. Yes. Right. So on the back end, I don't think there's really a few of that one, right? Yeah, but you're just going to give up the, the total package that we prepared to begin. Yep. Exactly. Great. Any other? Uh, this was a great discussion. Yeah. Great feedback. Yeah. Any other items or discussion? No, they're on us. Okay. Uh, I'll take a motion to adjourn the governance committee. Second. A motion. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Any notes or dissensions? We are adjourned and moving to the committee. Before we opened this meeting, we had a committee meeting at the EDC Audit and Finance, in which we recommended that the board accept the proposal, the proposed budget for 2025 as presented by staff. It passed uh, unanimously, so I'm making a recommendation to the full board that we pass the 2025 budget as well. A recommendation.